so I grew up without a TV and I read, 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 read all the time, which a lot was my, my political formation as well. And one book that really made a big difference for me was um, All Quiet on the Western Front, which I read very early, also like nine or 10, and that was like, okay, this is not okay to have these kind of situations. We need no war and no misery, and I gotta do something in my life to, you know, to, to get rid of the bad stuff. And, um, and that kind of was a driving principle. I wanted to do something with my life um, to essentially trite as it sounds, make the world a better place. And I felt that I was very, very privileged. We didn't have a lot of money, not a high style lifestyle, but a lot of travel and education. And so for me, I just felt like, wow, I've just been able to experience the beauty, you know, and the, and the richness of life. Everybody has to have this right. And so that's kind of what I, I felt very strongly. Now, in terms of science, as I grew older, I just, I really appreciated um, the cell and biology as I kind of started seeing it as a metaphor, if you wish, for human society. Um, and so if you think about it, the way the cell works and the way an organism works, it's all for the greater good of the whole. And so it just seemed like, wow, you know, we, we as a society, as you know, human society could learn from our own bodies. And I said, so really, you know, when you hear about just all of the misery every time you pick up the New York Times, I just think, wow, you know, if everybody studied biology, they couldn't possibly do this to each other. <laughs> really, it's just such a phenomenon that we are actually alive every second of the day. It's, it's stunning, and you think of all those pathways at the molecular level and the cellular level and the organismic level and at the environmental level, the ecological level. I mean, it's gorgeous, and so, like, how could you ever do anything to upset that balance? <laughs> and so that is kind of a driving force as well. So the first time I went to Nicaragua, uh, it was quite an experience. Essentially, I was wandering up and down the hallways, followed by roosters, and you know, this is a situation where there was running water twice a week and no electricity, you know, on and off electricity, and I was trying to figure out what in the world I was going to do. I just knew I wanted to use science in this broader context and to essentially use it for the better good. The idea was that it would be essentially, you know, using these techniques and that and, and that then it became, well, no, it's more than techniques, this is about the disease. And then, okay, it's more about than, than laboratory, it's about epidemiology. And then, okay, it's more than those two, it's about, you know, writing proposals. And then, oh, manuscript, and then it became like, this is the entire scientific context. And so that became essentially the mission of, of Sustainable Sciences Institute, was to be able to train people in the entire scientific enterprise. Um, but while I was doing that, I had to actually create a whole scientific program. But it just kind of snowballed, and I just, you know, so many people were interested because there was it was very unusual, and there was no other program or people really doing this. And I and I just felt that it was just too rude to be like, you know, and sow the seeds of all this interest, and then be like, oh, sorry, I have to go on with my career. I I couldn't do that, and so I instead I stopped my career, and I actually canceled my postdoc and said, I got to do this. I don't know what this is, but I got to do it. And I just followed, you know, kind of we went, we did a course in Ecuador and from there is another one. Then we went to Bolivia and then we, and so just kind of going one by one, little grants, $5,000, but enough to give a workshop. And I just had incredible volunteer support from, from everyone the world over, it seems. What I like to do outside the lab and outside of science, well, I love dancing <laughs> and more than that, I love my son. He's nine and a half and he loves soccer, <laughs> football. He travels a lot with me, he loves traveling. And he, like I said, he's really obsessed with soccer, he and his father. <laughs> so our house kind of revolves around the World Cup and around his soccer team. And he's been everywhere, you know, Cuba, Mexico, everywhere I go that I can bring him. But he loves Nicaragua, except for the mosquitoes. Yeah, <laughs> and he's aware of what mosquitoes can do, so he's a little concerned about mosquitoes. I think that having a, a fundamental understanding of, of math and sciences is extremely useful in life in general. Um, I think, you know, it's not something you're going to pick up later on in life, um, and understanding 
health and disease it, it is very, very helpful as a fundamental basis. It's a very useful framework um, for everybody to be well versed in, in these items, especially, you know, understanding prevention, public health issues, you know, in terms of, how, you know, why you would live your life healthy and how to live your life healthy and what the basis of that is, even at the molecular and cellular level, I think will allow you to integrate many elements of society later on. And so I would say that that is a very um, relevant framework, kind of as a platform, even if you're not going to major in the sciences for the rest of your life, um, but that, you know, what you do later on can always be built, uh, you know, from that and around that. Um, so I think it's actually very useful in the long run.